Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of From the Bottom Up, where we like to focus on whatever's present on the surface, whether it be thoughts in the world or emotions or feelings, and yeah, it just goes as deep as we can into the experience of who we are, and we never know what the show's going to be, but uh, I have a little advance notice. Uh, you can see this picture behind me. Kirsten and I took a walk yesterday here on Mirror Lake, and uh, kind of like the spiritual journey, the first half over there where you can see the, uh, like over here, the trees, it was very windy because of the way the wind just came over the lake, and so we almost turned around because the wind was making the nose so frozen. Kirsten had a scarf and even had to wrap around her, her nose. We weren't prepared. It was really warm and sunny in Camas, but by the time we, we went from the bottom up to this cold lake, <clears throat> we made it about halfway and we're like, oh, this is so cold, maybe we should turn around, but just prayed and felt to continue. And just within, I think, 10 seconds, we were at the other side. And so the wind just dissolved and um, it was just this warm, beautiful encounter with dogs. And so I've actually got Kirsten on my show with me today. Welcome, Kirsten. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> She's back from New Zealand and Japan, where she did a miracle working trip there. And mm -hmm. I thought, um, yeah, we'll start. We could start out with some of the experiences of that trip, but just be open too to going into what what's really real and alive for us in this moment that that touches our heart. And funnily enough, the thing that I feel to actually start with is really the end of your trip. But you can go where you want from it. But yeah, I just maybe you could share with me the experience of New Zealand and why you went there. Because when you describe this experience of being with your brother, I could just really feel like somehow that was everything or something. <laughs> you make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe we could show a photo. Oh yeah, let's, this let's put was, a photo up. Yeah, there. just before you show it, Nicholas, get the one ready of the hug. But yeah, this this photo actually shows um, why I went to New Zealand, and it was uh, which camera am I supposed or? to look at too? I don't know. What's that? Can you replace it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's why I went to New Zealand. I um. That that's my my brother, my older brother, and uh, he was actually homeless for the, for five years um, consciously, which I even quite like the whole story of that. Like he he decided for himself that that was was what he wanted to do, <laughs> just kind of take off and leave and be in his van and and uh, but it was a a bit of a prodigal son story because the whole time he was away, uh, my father felt this guilt and uh, that it, yeah, somehow that it was his fault and just a lot of memories and healing was coming up for him and there was nothing he could do about it uh, because, you know, Glenn was away. And so during that time, I just reflect a lot of innocence to him. And, and then finally, when uh, Glenn just showed up out of the blue, he didn't even know, but um, my dad had been putting money into his bank account the whole time. So he'd been away homeless, you know, and he didn't know that all of this money was coming into his account the whole time, which I just think is really symbolic of how we always are sourced by God and have so much more available to us than we realize. So he'd just come back and I felt the timing of going to New Zealand was, was now. It was like a feeling of a reunion and... Um, and all the emphasis was on forgiveness, actually, and uh, an allowance and non-judgment. So I just felt like I wanted to go there and hug them, and I wanted to hold them. And, and for myself, I felt like there was no guilt left in my mind of responsibility for them or specialness to undo. And so I felt like I could go there finally now. How long has it been? Six, seven years or Seven so? years, yeah. So I went there 
every year for seven years, I was guided to go back to New Zealand for a visit. And it was healing. There was so much healing as well as holding retreats and gatherings. But this time it was just purely to go and love them because I was ready to do that. Mm. So, and I just wanted to hold them. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it felt like. Oh, I just want to hold them. And every time I did, like every day at night, I would come to, to hug him and hold him. And I would just feel this, this love. And he would just take a big sigh and just relax. And be like, oh. I would say to him, oh, this is the highlight of my day, just hugging you. And he'd giggle like a little boy. Mm. <laughs> yeah. We were saying some interesting things to me around, like he had done spirituality and in his mind he'd done it and traveled to China and almost came and visited here. And But there was a mind training that was called for that. I don't know, maybe if you want to go into that a bit, like what your experience of that was or... Or you also mentioned the prodigal son story too. I don't know if they, mm -hmm. you didn't tell me about it, but I said, save it for the show. Uh -huh. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Well, he, it's like the movie, a beautiful mind. Oh, yeah, was, I had yeah. a flash of that movie um, the other day. Cause I was thinking about Glenn, my brother. And it's like, cause he, and that movie came to my mind. It's like he, he's a genius mind. He's very, very bright, out of the box, but always in trouble because he didn't have like mind training or discipline or know how to deal with it. And uh, so he, whatever he set his mind to in his life, he just like could, could do or become very, very quickly. He became a head chef within two years, which is unheard of. He decided to take over my father's business. He became a computer programmer. And people from around the country were calling him because he knew more than anyone else in the country within two years. His capacity was huge. But then he got into drugs because he still could not like focus or have peace. You know, there's an underlying anxiety that you don't ever deal with until you get into this kind of mind training. So he realized he was going to die if he didn't get out of drugs, basically. Um, and so he took off and went to China and explored spirituality and a bit of mind training through some martial arts and then India and Thailand. And, but he has this kind of impatience, I've done it attitude with things. And he had the same with spirituality. So he went so far into seeing like the dark and the light or the yin and the yang. But even with Buddhism, he, he kind of had settled with this belief that you need you need the dark to recognize mm. the light. Mm. You need the mm. contrast to mm. even know what the spirit is. Mm. And if you don't go all the way into forgiveness, you know, you can't be taken all the way truly into mm. peace, true peace of God. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So I just saw that in him that he'd, he'd only gone so far in the mind training and yeah. So, and so he needed a very simple structured life now. Now. Yeah. And really you were, called there to just love it wasn't about yeah. mind training or any you know the invite's not there like it was in yeah. japan where funnily enough i'm like mixing all the stories but yeah. even in japan one of the things that touched me was maybe um can you put on the green screen nicholas the picture of the japanese or the chinese lady is that easy or is it too hard okay while he's getting that kirsten said that while she was in japan all of the people that would come up to her would say, because they've been listening to her or David or reading the course for years, that they're so attentive. Or they, they know they're supposed to be attentive and pay attention and follow guidance, but they can't. You know, they just can't do it. And so they'd be so ashamed. And so she would line up in these lines where people would come in. And your only job pretty much for the whole time was to just love everybody. And mm -hmm. I think it's maybe harder than we thought with this picture thing, but. We could, you can let us know if it's too difficult. Um, Switch, but. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> We're going. <laughs> so this, you, you, this is kind of what, one of your highlights there in, in Japan as well. Yeah, when I first arrived at the house where we were going to hold the retreat, um, the volunteers were there who'd been preparing 
um, for the last couple of months and just really practicing with devotion and yeah when I arrived it was like they it, it took probably half an hour for me just to walk down this little hallway from the front door of the house to <laughs> the room because they're just so overcome with emotion and yeah what I saw there like as a culture, I don't want to generalize and say everyone in Japan has a certain state of mind because it's the same in any culture, you know, but generally what I experienced there with those who were into the course or into spirituality was that there was already such an integrity and a, a, an honor of the present moment that they didn't need the focus to be on mind training to get present you know on mind training to let go of distracting thoughts and let, to learn about mind chatter and mind wandering it was like they were already instantly there like when i sat down to speak they were already there at least 15 minutes early i don't know how long they were but they were in deep stillness and deep silence and even the thought of playing a song to bring everyone into the stillness it was just, you know, it was so unneeded, unne unnecessary. They helped me drop into the stillness even deeper just by sitting down in their presence with them. And so I just kept, I was felt surrounded by honor. It just, it was just this honor mm. of the mm. spirit and the honor of our time together. And it, in Japan, they don't actually usually kind of bow and do this, but <laughs> we were doing this constantly. And they say, no, it's only because you're here that we're doing this. <laughs> they <laughs> don't. <laughs> Not usually, no. It's like they bow their head, but they don't well, they do I the prayer know. position or yeah. something. But, yeah, that we just all kind of fell into naturally. But, um, yeah, so that whole phase of, of mindfulness to be present was just not even something that I was mm -hmm. there to talk about at all. Mind training wasn't the focus either. Um, yeah, a couple of, they're so, they're already so hard on themselves. Like they already have such high expectations of enlightenment um, that they're acutely aware of their own um, any mind wandering or missing of prompts or not following of guidance, rebellion, what they call rebellion, they cry over. Like one of the girls there was telling me <laughs> that she had a project to put uh, Japanese subtitles on a, a YouTube video of Francis's. And this is something they're just doing themselves. They're finding these YouTubes and whoever can speak English says, Oh my God, this is wonderful. We need subtitles on this so we can share it. So they have this whole mission going on over there of <laughs> sharing the inspiration that they find. And she had this, she was meant to be putting subtitles on um, a movie, they call it. And then she had this strong feeling like, no, no, I just want to watch a movie. I want to watch a movie. And she didn't know if it was guided or not. And then later on realizing that she was distracted, she was devastated. Um, just this like, oh my God, I'm so, I'm so bad at following the Holy Spirit's guidance. Like they're so devastated mm. by, yeah, by what they see as being almost against God. Like, they're so soft, like so soft. And yeah, I was just, it was just amazing actually to be constantly surrounded by such honor, such honor of our shared purpose. And every time anyone spoke and took the mic, they spoke for a long time because the, the translation of English to Japanese, it's like a totally different <laughs> sentence structure. And so you had to give full messages and then they had to be completely translated. So that, that took time, but they were going to make the most of every single second of the opportunity to express and share their heart while I was there. Like this was a golden opportunity of their lifetime. And so when they took the mic, they spoke slowly and deliberately sharing what was on their heart and sharing what they were seeing and it was just so precious like every single expression was mm. was like mm. the most important expression ever you know just mm -hmm. that feeling there were no waste there's no, no wasted time like the time mm -hmm. was so honored mm. um, 
and the healing that they had because they were so, so in honor of it and ready to see whatever was to be seen. It was mystical. Mm. It's just like even, yeah. A movie that I would show that I've shown before. I showed mm. a movie there and, and they showed me the depth, even more depth of how inc incredible that movie was <laughs> just by watching it with them through their eyes. Mm. So. Well, it's an interesting to me because the theme, even in Japan where you could say you're going over, they, they're calling you over as a teacher, you know, whether you identify with that or not, it's irrelevant, it's all for you when you go over, but, and then you end up going to New Zealand where it's t totally different context and yet the answer is the same for both because maybe we can put up the picture with um, Roger, the brother, and can put it behind me, that'd be great too, but Roger, the brother, and Kirsten, you know, when you showed up, they too had such an honor for you, like, because they hadn't seen you in seven years, and after all the, the complaining, why are you doing this, why are you following, they, they had so much abandonment that, uh, <laughs> that you left them or whatever, and that had gone off for God, they couldn't help but project that onto you. And yet they probably gave their whole effort that when you were going to come this time, they were going to make <laughs> the most of it. And yet there's yeah. still these like underlying things that they probably want to express. Maybe you could talk a bit about mm -hmm. how that all mm -hmm. worked in visiting them. Yeah. Oh, we're right in the picture. Yeah, right in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> but now it's a family photo. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's beautiful oh, there we go <laughs> so yeah that's that's my wild and woolly brother <laughs> on one side and my dad roger on the other and for those of you who have read my book i married a mystic you know you know them you know they're these characters from my from my story and uh well what was amazing actually this time is that an angel was sent to go with me you know yeah. And I feel like that was part of the answer for this whole thing because, yeah, as you described, there was there's such a f still a fear of loss with me, and now they can see how happy I am and tr and have come to a sense of acceptance that this is my life, and it is a calling. And even though on some level they can't fully understand it, they know that it's right now. And, um, and even, yeah, and, and Roger's even told me how other people have asked about me and now he can share it actually from a place almost of pride. Well, this is what she's doing. She's helping a lot of people <laughs> <laughs> and she's really changing their lives. And so he can relate to it. There's some, it's not just undoing the ego that he couldn't relate to, <laughs> you know, and I couldn't explain <laughs> for so long, but um, now he's really more able to. You're a just, counselor. I'm a counselor. Yeah. I'm a counselor. Yeah. Um, but I was still kind of limited in what I could share because there's just the fear of the fear of love that would still come up, you know. And so, um, yeah, Clint, um, who he's just like this this angel who's just showed up, really. Well, last July. Um, he came to the monastery to our event there and then he came to the monastery to volunteer for a couple of weeks and then this whole miracle story unfolded about him being in Japan and then everything in Japan unfolding to be at the same time and and then he just um, yeah well I could even back up and just share before that when when it was clear we were going to be in Japan for this whole mission, um, we spent a couple of days together here when we were both in, in Salt Lake City and we went out to Mirror Lake. <laughs> um, and we got out there and we went to sit down by the lake and, and I just started telling him about my brother in New Zealand and I was crying and I, I was like, what is going on? I, why am I crying? Why am I pouring my heart out with Clint who I, you know, and why I just couldn't, it couldn't make sense of it, but it felt really, really beautiful. It just felt so right. And then he just shared this um, 
experience of, ch- of this blessing around family and the spirit just came through him in the most profound way. It just, I, you know, you pay attention when you can feel this presence of the spirit, you know, in these encounters. And then once Japan was all happening, he had other plans. He was supposed to go to Europe immediately afterwards. And then I started feeling, oh, I'm definitely going to New Zealand immediately from Japan. So I told him I was starting to have that feeling. And um, he was like, okay, that sounds great. And then within three days, all of his plans in Europe completely unraveled. And there were plane tickets and conference rooms. And this involved a lot of people and all kinds of money and plan, you know, whole conference the whole thing dissolved and then he was praying on the plane and he had a vision of him being in New Zealand and he felt that he had a healing part to play with Roger and Glenn, (laughs) my brother and my dad. And he told me that and I was like, wow, that is completely unexpected. I thought, okay, I'll just, Jesus, I'm in your hands. I'll just see what happens. So then I was on a call with Roger and I was sharing about Japan and how this friend of mine's coming and you're going to spend all these weeks together. And he said, well, if he's a good friend of yours and you would like him to come, just know that he's very welcome. So then Roger put out the invitation. So then, yeah, we, we showed up in New Zealand and, and yeah, Clint was just amazing. Like just the way the spirit, was able to come through him and he could share his direct experience of being with me for those um, like three weeks or so and all of the miracles that he witnessed through the work that I was doing and all of the healing and all of the love and the heart opening all from his own experience. It's like Roger could hear it and Glenn could hear it. And And he would eat with them like Roger and, Glenn. Glenn, you know, eat three, me- four meals a day. They have breakfast. <laughs> At least. <laughs> and second breakfast. And then lunch. And then afternoon tea. And then dinner. And then muffins. And then dessert. And it was just like, you know, after 10 years, look down to one or two light meals a day. <laughs> so you'd be like, whereas Clint can really eat, you know. He, so he would be there <laughs> with them with every meal. This is what the Holy Spirit does. <laughs> <laughs> and then you yeah. know you'd be done with these gatherings, and Clint would be, so Roger, tell me what what's your business? You know, Kirsten knows everything and can't authentically ask from her heart. So, Dad, tell me about your business. But Clint genuinely wants to know, and the Dad would light up, and then Clint would like transform it into, oh, yeah, well, you know what Kirsten said to this person up here and this person there, and they're like, what? And and they could hear it from Clint because there was no. There was no filters that they were looking through about a daughter or a past relationship. And so he was sharing all these miracles about Kirsten's life and what she did in New Zealand. And they, at one point, he, uh, in Japan, at one point, the dad even said, oh my, that's so amazing. You need to go back to Japan right now. What are you doing here? And then he, he heard what he was saying. Whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> this is my moment with you. But that was how the spirit was like totally translating yeah. everything that you were doing. Yeah. through him yeah yeah oh it was just amazing yeah and i could just sit there and relax just relax and just watch this mm-hmm. encounter and just see all of this yeah all the miracles just being shared and the yeah. love being shared and yeah even at one point he fell in love with him so much he went and uh he was insistent upon getting some pictures like he takes these great photos so he went and wanted to get some pictures blown up Onto yeah, printed, printed and framed. So he took you to the store. Mm-hmm. Maybe you could share. I really think this is a great. <laughs> yeah. Or do you want me to say? Yeah, you can share it. Well, my because <laughs> there's two whole parts. Yeah. The story, the love part, and then the the frame part, which is yeah. probably what you're thinking. Well, about. it all comes from the love, but mm. he Clint has just started. He might even be watching, but Clint has just started the course in miracles, and so he doesn't even know about the section with the uh, the two the two pictures the two I think pictures it's, it's called. called yeah and he says that you you know you have the frame and you have the picture so he so he went over in all innocence to buy these 
frames for this two pictures of Kirsten with her brother and her dad. And which one is nicer? He asked Kirsten. She was kind of like, couldn't really focus, but he knew which one was a nicer frame. She's like, yeah, that is a more beautiful frame. It was a little more expensive. And so they bought it and then they went up to the counter to purchase it and then slipped the picture in. And the way the glass was set up, there was some kind of a, a small little cut or something and it, it cut the picture. It literally like that scratched, yeah. scratched the photo. across the photo. And I, I thought that was just amazing right there, a little parable around, mm -hmm. you know, with all of this love that wants to come through. But if you ever focus a little too much on the form, on the form or the frame, it yeah. literally cuts yeah. through the picture. And, you know, the Course says that you need to learn to focus on purely on the picture, purely on the picture, which yeah, is the, the love holy instant. underneath. And no yeah. investment need go. Yeah. And yet, I mean, this gesture, the whole thing was amazing. So it's hard to say anything was, mm. was right or wrong. But I thought that was a great yeah, yeah. parable. And then you have a part with that too? Well, that just, yeah, it seems like that was a part of it. Like it was already done. He'd already actually got the photos mm -hmm. and he'd got them framed. And they were the most amazing gift yeah. like that Roger could ever receive is like fresh new photos mm -hmm. that just really show the love. Like these ones we shared here, the one of the three of us in the hug, you know, those are the photos that he framed for Roger and mm. Glenn to give them one each as a gift. And when Glenn saw the one of us hugging, he just started giggling again, like he did when I hugged him. Mm. And I said to him again, you know, this is why I came to New Zealand. You know, I came to hug you. I came to just love you. And again, it felt like it was something that would stay with him. And, uh, yeah, and so this was the next set of photos to send down to my younger brother because oh, we'd been to visit with okay. him. And then it was it was just it's so subtle though. It's like yeah. it's perfect, it's done, send the photos. But then it's like, well, maybe this is something we can join on, even with right. his intention. You know, just to even decide on it together. But it was just a little bit of focus on the form. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, you could just feel the contrast of the experience. Maybe yeah. we could show the picture of the brother that Clinton the other brother with uh, the young girl because this was kind of a cool story too because on the way down um, before Kirsten got there this younger brother well, you can just throw it up on front there it's okay this uh, younger brother said to Kirsten you know I don't know something about when you said I had this calling you had to let go of everything and he said but you let go of me you let go of me I told him I had to let go of attachment he said well that's fine for you but you know I was your attachment so you let go of me and my family and he just said yeah that's it was really hard and it's still hard yeah yeah and was that in the encounter? That, when that you were, was in the encounter. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because you had told them you could do this big, long expression session. Yeah. But when you got down there, there was so much love and connection with this picture with the yeah. young girl that they're going to try to put up on front here. Yeah. That it kind of just dissolved the whole it thing. And he just it. said, I just felt abandoned in the whole thing. That's, yeah. that's your niece, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Kristen had never met her because she's seven years old and she hadn't been there since Kirsten, you know, was there seven years ago. So she was born afterwards. And yeah, this just love here just kind of dissolved the whole thing with even the other brother feeling yeah, abandoned. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was amazing. It's like the love literally dissolved time. And because I'd had a call with my younger brother um, uh, a few months ago and he he had this hurt I could feel there was still this hurt and he started to say how he had this anger but covering over the top and I just said don't cover over the top that's how you get sick you know I want you to be real with me you know just get angry whatever mm -hmm. it takes I want I'd, I'd rather you be free of it you know, and then then repress it and uh, so when I went, yeah, I was fully ready to spend a, at least a couple of hours together. I thought at least we'll go and have lunch together and then there'll be an opportunity just mm -hmm. naturally to see what needs to be spoken. But we were in so much love. And like my little niece, you know, I arrived at the airport. I was hugging my brother in this little rugby tackle. <laughs> just like, whoom, <laughs> landed. There she is. Oh, wow. <laughs> she just came barreling up and grabbed my leg. And, <clears throat> 
we would just fell in love at first sight and we just couldn't stop hugging each other and holding each other and yeah it's just beautiful and and we were just so there with them and like so present that it was a love fest like for the whole time and then so by the time we had that conversation it was literally five minutes as we were waiting to pick her up from school it was like that it was like it was hard I said yeah it was hard for me too I love you so much it's like yeah I know I love you so much too and it was it it was done we're like oh my god we love each other so much There's something else too. It's like flash too. Oh yeah, because you had heard that they had a difficult relationship, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You could show that one too, Nicholas. The 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 one. Oh, maybe that wasn't in your four. No, it wasn't. It You'll wasn't. have to describe it. Okay, it's it's the niece, nephew, Gavin, and Susan, his wife. If there's a f- or with me as well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Or at least that's four of us. So that's my brother with his his um, partner, Susan. And yeah, I just keep hearing um, a lot about the difficulty they had in their relationship and because they're both very strong-willed and um, it was a bit of a rocky start, unexpected pregnancy and yeah, and he was in a messy state in his life, you know. <laughs> and uh, But I went down there and that was just not my... Like, there was so much joy that they were so inspired by the joy that they they were it's like their whole relationship got re-inspired and ignited and and they were just sharing the depth of for her spirituality she has all kinds of spiritual experiences and so does my nephew apparently he has, he has a voice yeah. um, so and and the the brother that you saw there had so much feeling of being abandoned by kirsten but he always wanted a family around. So he lost his mother with Jackie. To God. To God. He lost Kirsten to God. And in his prayer, you know, he didn't realize it for seven years until this moment that Kirsten went down there. But when he finally let go of that, he wasn't going to have it in the form that he wanted. He was guided to move down with his wife, who's Maori, to this southern island. And, or... A bit further south. A bit further south. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently, she's like a descendant of a royal, royal Maori family. Which she didn't even know because she was adopted. She was adopted, didn't even know. So she's looking for a connection too. He's looking for a connection. They let go of where they wanted the connection from. Turns out she's from this royal family. She has like 50 cousins and sisters and brothers that didn't even know about. So they moved into this area where everywhere they go, they're seeing people in shops and hi and hey this. And they have this massive extended family. (laughs) Like, (laughs) I mean, you can't, you can't make this stuff up. Like, there's that line in the course, when you decide upon the form that you would seek, you lose the understanding of its purpose. The understanding is the love underneath. But when you choose the form, then you're actually totally unaware of love, demand, clinging, clinging, clinging. But when you let it go and you let God bring in the symbols, they can just reflect this love that you have in your heart. And I thought this was a great... <laughs> no. How's that? They went from being like two, almost like, what's it single children because Gavin had lost his you know his brother was homeless and his sister was off with God and the other brother and gone. yeah the other brother off homeless and then his right. wife who was adopted so she was single like on her own and then the two of them go down there and then boom they've got <laughs> like all these aunties and uncles and nieces and nephews and, <laughs> and Glenn too the, the, the homeless one who's now mm. there you said there's a prodigal son story because he was off and had no money mm-hmm. and was like living you know, picking his own vegetables from the forest and hungry at times. And wasn't there a story? With it? Yeah, well, I kind of shared it, but maybe you didn't hear at the beginning. <laughs> On my show? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you better tell me again. <laughs> There's something more to share. But wasn't your dad putting... Yeah, he was. Did you say that? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. He was... Yeah, he, he started putting $1,000 a month into Glenn's bank account um, just you know wanting to make uh-huh. sure in his mind that he he did everything he could right, right. You know, to look after him and Glenn was oblivious to it he had no idea and so by the time he got back it was four years after Roger had started putting this money into his account there's forty thousand dollars <laughs> forty thousand dollars in this account it was like God's giving us everything but we until we're ready to approach home we can't accept the gifts that are sitting there waiting he his yeah. dad's literally biological dad yeah 
Yeah, but it's so perfect because they, it's like now, yeah, my brother Glenn, he just needs a very simple life. And so he's focused on food mm. and cooking and gardening and cleaning and service. He's actually looking after Roger. Mm -hmm. Roger thinks he's looking after Glenn. <laughs> and he's all worried about Glenn's state of mind. And, you know, did he have a psychotic break? And does he need more support? And what am I, what is he going to do when I die? You know, he's having all of those parental thoughts. And meanwhile, Glenn is looking after Roger. Because <laughs> Roger was so lonely and abandoned when he was gone. And now, you know, Roger has a function and a purpose with his son. And, and Glenn has a function and a purpose to cook and clean. And so it's just so perfect. And, and then, yeah. Tell Tell us about too, like um, Clint's Mormon writer doesn't totally identify with that. Maybe yeah, he anymore. he was kind yeah. of raised with that, but he's and so on the plane ride over or something, he heard that he was going to be giving a speech, a sermon at a Mormon church in New Zealand, and so he lands there and or what, maybe you can tell us how that yeah, he heard he would go to church on Sunday and that he would he would speak and. So he looked on Google Maps to Google Mormon churches and uh, the only one in the entire area was literally you walk out of my dad's driveway and across the road, like this little little road, and that is the back gate for the Mormon church. <laughs> it's literally <laughs> like 20 feet from the house. And uh, so... He had this sort of going on Sunday, but then we were going to go down and yeah, it all worked out. We actually f caught a flight that, that afternoon to go down south. So the timing was perfect. So I went with him. I've never been to a Mormon. You didn't even know Sunday the Mormon service. church was in your backyard. Red. I kind of knew it was there, oh, but it was, okay. I didn't really know what Mormon was. I'd never. You should until... tell me these things before my show. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... Yeah, we, we went in the back door, you know, to go in for the Sunday service. And it was just full of love and hugs and sweet, sweet people. And, uh, and we sat there and, and I'm not sure exactly how often, if it's every second or fourth Sunday, but it's, it's testimonies. So um, everyone who feels called to stands up and, and testifies to the work of Jesus Christ in their life like that week some kind of miracle experience that they've had or forgiveness or, or help that they're needing, something that they're praying for and would like to share with everyone. And so Clint went up um, towards the end and yeah, it was amazing actually. He just, it just poured out of him about how he'd been going to church all these years and he, um, and in this experience of this last couple of months and particularly this last three weeks of spending this time with, he said, there's this angel who's come into my life and he said, I feel she, she demonstrates a life with Jesus Christ more closely with Jesus Christ than anyone else I've ever met in my life. And he said, she's so devoted to following his guidance um, and practicing forgiveness that it's deeply inspiring and he said but the most inspiring thing that I've learned um, is about relationships and I can see that I've always been um, kind and good and service like his life's always been about service and guidance following guidance to the best of his ability that's what the Mormon the foundation of of it is, is really living with Jesus and inviting him and following guidance. He said, but this is a whole new level. And the real healing is in being transparent and sharing your, your, the private thoughts and hidden thoughts that you would keep secret. And he said, even coming to church here, we, we put on our happy face and we say we're fine and we say we're good. He said, but I'm realizing you've got to go through the darkness to the light and you have to actually... <laughs> You have to share the things that you feel most guilty and most ashamed about to feel the presence of Christ's love because you don't feel innocent unless you're being real. And so he just went and he testified about that in front of the whole church. And afterwards, just all these people were coming up to him, just thanking him and saying, oh my God, that was amazing. Thank you. Thank you for, for what you shared. So. <laughs> like that's how Jesus gets 
bring the darkness to the light into the morning <laughs> to a Mormon church. It's like, mm. and Clint is so comfortable. He's, we had this joining at one point, and yeah, maybe you're new to the Course in Miracles, but he's a very mature oh, miracle worker in the sense of, uh, what's the word? Holy encounters. Holy encounters, yeah. yeah. Like just really this blessing. So Jesus is yes. making the most of that. He's over in India right now, and he's so inspired by this line. I raised the dead and healed the sick and you will do these things even more from the Bible. And so, yeah, I had a call with him today just to see how his experience is with that and his experience with Kirsten was. And he just said it's to him right now, it's all love. And he's just love appreciating all the ways Jesus is working in his life. Mm -hmm. And he's made a deeper commitment now in joining with you to um, only doing things if he follows his, his guidance. Jesus' his guidance. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he kind of just stood up and proclaimed that in the first gathering in Japan because he, he could see that so often, often where he's coming from is service oriented. So there's a purity in it, but starting to just really see that he wanted a deeper experience of truly being moved by the Spirit every time. Um, and so yeah, even when he first landed back there in India, he was just there for three days before he, um, or it's nighttime now. So yeah, but like tomorrow he'd be back into moving back into the direction mm -hmm. of what he's there to do work-wise. Because he works like 300 patients a day with, they come with these injuries and sicknesses or things. And he does this thing with this doctor in the realm and it all disappears for many of the people mm -hmm. or heals. So he's getting all of these witnesses of, some presence in him or the, you know helping in the form so. mm -hmm. yeah yeah but yeah just seeing even more even during that time there that three days that he would normally be off like he was invited to a, a friend was opening a healing center and she was saying please come and help me i need your help i'm overwhelmed i have too many people coming to the opening and i just i need you <laughs> you know and another couple of invitations and normally he would love to say yes to that like that's what he lives for and he just stopped and prayed and, and he just heard, no, be still. This is a time of integration and prayer. And I want you to be here with me. So, and, and in that, in that following, in that listening and following, even to that guidance to be still, then of course, you know, you see mm. so much more of what, so much more of what's underneath. Mm. You know? So, yeah. He's got 60 hawks <laughs> flying around. He's on this, he got upgraded to this super high tower in India and all these hawks are playing around him, grabbing each other's feet and flying all over the place. And somehow that was a symbol for him of expansion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I've got so many <laughs> space here for all these miracles that you shared. Is there anything else from Japan that? Mm. comes to your mind from the experience because mm. we kind of mo mostly focused on New Zealand and Clint but yeah and we've been open to at some point in Japan or Asia because I think David's felt for a while that there's such a maturity and a stability and like Kirsten said they're doing all this work on subtitling and on their own their own initiative even at one point um one of our volunteers that flew over to help Kirsten left for a little bit and they needed someone to fill in with the cameras and they're also highly mind trained that with just with a few simple instructions they could help Raphael who was guided to film Kirsten kind of do a documentary on all of this called uh, Jesus in Japan uh, but with Maria Magdalena's energy and so he just felt guided to follow Kirsten it's kind of like I guess part of this documentary, Jesus in Japan. So he needed help. And so these guys stepped in and it just was a really a strong symbol that, you know, if there was going to be a fruitful base somewhere, it could be Japan. It's kind of like Holland has all these people that are there together, kind of ripe and ready to just keep going deeper. So you were kind of sent over on this mission to, to see how that, how that felt for you, extend the love, and yeah, do you have any feelings of where this is gonna go? Mm -hmm. 
next it just feels like really open i think it, it feels like in terms of coming to like a community coming together spiritual community it would be so natural because there's already such an honor of following guidance together and wanting to heal together and this purity of, of the intention uh, and such humbleness that, Oh my God, when you have that kind of humbleness, that's you, you can't fail. You just, you can't, <laughs> you can't fail. So yeah, I feel that. And it was just amazing how activated these people were like Mariko is the one who really um, inspired the whole thing. And she organized it all and she's a mystic at heart and she has these um, she has a group that she works with she has sessions you know weekly sessions and she puts out these videos on YouTube where she just doesn't hold back she starts off with a teaching theme and then before she knows it she's just pouring out all her own healing and emotions and she stops and cries and blows her nose and then goes back into it you know, she's just like us <laughs> which is rare in Japan you know it's there's a such a culture of like honor and if you're a teacher you know this is like this is not mm. typical at all and and so those who are really sincerely looking to awaken they immediately recognize that and go whoa mm. and it's like it's i don't know how to describe it but it's like there's there's this incredible readiness you know that is there, like Hiratate was, came, he's this professional cameraman for a news team, like the equivalent of the BBC, for example, um, or I don't know, CNN or something, in Japan, and he has this amazing camera, the kind of camera that you make the best quality movies on, and he was capturing this footage for Japan, and then he just started to get completely disillusioned, like they wouldn't show the footage he caught, because and he started to see that how all the news really was just what the government wanted to show. And, mm. and so <clears throat> he got more and more unhappy. And in Buddhism, he'd been told something like it, all of the disasters, because in Japan, there's been massive earthquakes, massive tsunami, like all kinds of things happening. It was a ma one of the main themes that was coming up too in the gatherings, um, particularly up north, because that's where they were. But he was told by a, someone who was Buddhist, this is kind of Earth's revenge of like wanting to get rid of human beings. It's karma. <laughs> and he was like, okay, where do you go with that? You know, so he was depressed. And then he saw one of Nariko's videos and there was something she said in there. Mm. God did not create the world. And he was like, mm -hmm. oh my God, he was so lit up by mm. that. He's like, I need more. And this mm. retreat was coming. Mm. So he wrote to her, this was like two weeks before the retreat. And he said, I, I, I want to come to your retreat. And then after he'd said that, he heard a voice for the first time in his life saying, offer to help them. And meanwhile, Raphael was there mm -hmm. praying for help mm -hmm. from another camera. Mm -hmm. And so Hiratate said to Noriko, I just heard this voice. I've never heard a voice before in my life, but it's saying offer to help them. And this is what I do. <laughs> like this is just what happened over and over and over again. And if this guy shows up, I could cry. I could cry because he has such a deep calling. And it's like the whole trip was to answer this calling, you know, for so many. It just it constantly just blows me away like how amazing it is you know that like this this life and this guidance that we have to just be available and move like this whole thing felt like a big tidal wave to me when it came in and the speed with which it came in even to go to japan in october when i was loaded up with retreat after retreat and mystery school i'm like how am i going to put my mind into a going to Japan that's insane <laughs> <laughs> I just had to surrender and trust that somehow it was going to happen and and then I witness you know like who it's for and miracle after miracle so he just came and he was behind the camera and blowing Raphael away like everything Raphael needed Hiratate offered he, did, he wanted a drone. He wanted some drone footage. Hiratate's like, yeah, I have a drone. I can operate that for you. He, like, he wanted a slider you know, to do some moving footage and go and visit a temple. He's like, I have a slider. I'll come with you. 
<laughs> and then he offered his camera and I was like, oh my God, like that's the kind of camera that like my father even hardly gets to use. It's like, we're talking major movie quality camera. And then, yeah, just every time he shared, cause he's behind the camera, just so attentive, so joined with Raphael in mind. Like Raphael couldn't believe the mindfulness. It was so telepathic. He would have a thought of a shot and wanted Hiratate to, to focus in on one of the participants and Hiratate would just like look at him, catch his thought and do it. You know, they're just like, oh. yeah, it was just amazing. And every time he shared, it was just so profound, like brand new, but such depth you know, of awareness of what mm. was really happening. Mm. And Eddie, sure, I bet he was here at our mystery school. And yeah. she too, she didn't have any funds or whatever, but she prayed to come. Yeah. And the house showed up beside. And yeah. she turns out she translated oh. for your gathering. And but, she was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. She, I kept thinking of her and she said, I know that you're, I want to see you. I want to spend time with you. And she said, but I don't feel to come to the retreat. I don't understand. And then it was the day before the retreat started and uh, she kept coming to my mind so strong on the train on the way there. And suddenly, and then Raphael was saying, I need another translator. I don't know why I'm saying this. And I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> That's the missing piece. So I just wrote to her and I said, Ali, pray about this. Do you want to come as a translator, not as a participant? And I said to Noriko, is it possible? Is there somewhere for her to stay? And she said, yeah, actually someone rented an entire house and then they canceled, but they've paid for it and they, they want to offer this house in any way it can be of support. <laughs> so I wrote to her, I said, there's a house for you, you know, just, just come. And she, it took her 30 seconds, you know, to reply. She was just all these love hearts and sparkles. Uh -huh. She's like, oh my God, I feel it. I feel it. I, I really want to come. And, and she, yeah, she was amazing. She was just so natural. Uh, uh, the greatest translator ever. <laughs> Maybe you could put up, not on the green screen, but put up that Japanese lady picture again. Because, yeah, it just really touched me that this picture you see, we don't have the one before, but the lady was so nervous a few pictures before that she was going to have to hug Kirsten at all because she thought she could just come and listen. And yet there's this big lineup. And when she finally got here, this is, <laughs> I mean, yeah. you can just. Yeah. yeah, so pure. She she saw me hug the first person as I walked in the door. And there was so much love that they all started to cry. And she felt this terror come up in her, like this real fear. And so she was like standing there just, whoa, I don't want to hug her. I don't want her to come close to me. Like just really afraid. And then, yeah, there's actually a series of photographs, but then like as, as she got closer and then she, it's almost like the, the fear moved through. And then it was like, oh my God, I'm going to, I'm going to be in there. <laughs> and then at the time, <laughs> she was just completely overcome. And then at one point at one of the expressions, yeah, she just said, um, I think it was after one of the movies, maybe Salmon Fishing in the Yemen. Um, she, she then, she just said, well, I, I just don't know if I'm quite ready to leave everything, including my family and move into spiritual community to share. And we hadn't even had that conversation, but it was just already right there. So it's often when there's the most fear because there's, there's a deep calling, you know, that's, that's there that hasn't even been fully seen yet. So so precious and then that other girl who's been working with Noriko for years and mm -hmm. is kind of in this maximized relationship where they're not going deeper we didn't have any context she comes up to you and she's like so do you think I should leave my husband and kids because Noriko says I should is <laughs> 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 like she pulled the old well, you know what you should do. She's like, I do, I do, I do. <laughs> There's probably more depth to it. Pull the old. <laughs> <laughs> it's a trick. 
<laughs> that's my version. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well it was it was pretty much it. <laughs> she Yeah. Yeah, she just knew. You know, and there's just like a point where I said, Well tell me tell me about your relationship. You know, does he support you coming here and can you go deeper with him? Can you share anything with him? She said no. Actually he hates of course miracles. <laughs> and and she said, and I, I've talked to him about divorce twice. And she said, but then my father says, you have to stay with him for your son. You know, you have an eight-year-old son. It's very important. You must stay with him. So she said, so I listened to my father. And then I don't really know if that's the voice of the ego or the Holy Spirit. And that's where I said, I think you know. You know what? What right. voice that is, and yeah. then she burst into laughter. Actually, rather than do she burst. She said, "Yeah, I know, I know." I said, "So I, I think you just need to know you'll be safe. Yeah. You know, and you know the answer. You know, you know your calling, and just trust it. And you have you you have no idea how much support mm. is waiting for you." Mm. Yeah. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's maybe a good place to leave it because I, I feel that's like the course says that a teacher of, of God's first function is to inspire. And, and the last thing he needs to do is to inspire. <laughs> so we have all these metaphors of, you know, speaking to your brothers, delivering the message, but in the end, it's really this kind of a trip where you start out intending to love people are going to either get mind training or not out of it it's irrelevant it's like you are live, giving love and receiving it and i think that's probably why you're so touched by this whole trip you really had to put no effort into any aspect of it and even the community this quote community of 30 or 50 of us here didn't really help mm -hmm. all that much it, it was jesus that pulled the strings of other bodies to orchestrate things and it was another layer of letting go of any dependence on particular people for support it's even deeper letting jesus orchestrate mm -hmm. everything is that a fair feeling that you yeah yeah you had yeah it just felt like this miracle leading the way of this unknown it felt like an unknown quality of this somehow just this this love this it just felt like a wave and i just needed to like be willing to be on top of the wave and and let the wave carry me and to trust that everything would be taken care of and, and all the support or help or whatever was needed mm. would, would arise because the calling was so strong and, and it was so obviously, so obviously Jesus behind it all. And it, and it was almost like the more I gave credit to Jesus, the stronger it became in awareness. Funny that. You know? <laughs> but yeah, I, I, there's just so many parables where we could just stay here all day. But just even Jesus, you wanted to end on that. We can Not end on before. this parable. <laughs> Tell us one more. One more. End us off. Well, it was like it, when, when Clint showed up in July um, for their celebrating in a peace event at the monastery the year before, he showed up and because his friend, a, a friend of ours who's into the course said, Clint, I know you're not into the course, but go to this monastery, meet these people, you'll love them. And so he showed up and, and he could feel this, you know, the whole purpose of everything. And then he saw David and we were celebrating in a peace, celebrating Jesus, celebrating, you know, a course of miracles in our lives. And then he listened to David talk about Jesus on the stage. And afterwards he was like, oh my God, that guy loves Jesus like he just talked about Jesus like he was his best friend and he was doing everything with him and Clint was so inspired when he came back um, like a pretty much a year later actually to volunteer we had a conversation and he said to me you know who I want to meet in this we had a conversation who do you want to meet in this lifetime who would you really want to meet and he said I want to meet Jesus and yeah I know he said, that's who I want to meet. I, I, he said, I, I feel like I used to know him, but I really want to meet him now. And so it was, when this guidance came, it was like Jesus behind it and I knew it. 
and I just kept saying Jesus's name, like in every single conversation about this trip, Jesus is planning it. Jesus is telling me, Jesus is arranging it. I called Mariko. I said, Mariko, Jesus, <laughs> like, and she's like, oh my God, Jesus. <laughs> she's so in love with Jesus. So the whole time we would pray to Jesus for the, for the, like, okay, let's plan it. Let's sit together. She came over to be, spend three days with me for this, the, the event planning and, and we sat there with a picture of Jesus and, and we just knew it was him. And it just feels like it was the answer to that prayer of him wanting Jesus in his life mm. and to know Jesus. Mm. And then even when he was sharing in the Mormon church, you know, mm. there's no one that I know mm. who is, mm. who's with Jesus. And, and at one point towards the end of the gathering, he shared that, like, this was my prayer. And he said, I feel like I know Jesus now through all of these encounters mm. and this experience oh. even more so. Mm. That's um, beautiful. Yeah. Miracle working. Yeah. yeah. Mm. yeah but uh, yeah i just want to share this and for me to see that too because i have phases where it's it goes from being jesus to then it's the spirit or the light and it's it's all the same ultimately but when there are these when there's this focus on knowing like for me jesus has always been like a straight shooter he's very direct he doesn't mess about, say, oh, my beloved child, da, 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 da. he's like, vom, 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 you know, <laughs> he's just, yeah, he's very direct and specific. And so I knew that that clarity was behind the whole thing. And so with that kind of a knowing, even more so, I could just really rest in the fact that it was not my plan. Mm. And I could just keep referring to that every day. Like I'm, no. I'm not in charge. This is your plan. This is your plan. Mm. And, and so it just felt like I was carried through the whole thing. Mm. Thank you. Thanks for coming on the show, my show, <laughs> sharing Jesus with us. <laughs> yeah, thank you, everybody. <clears throat> Thanks for joining us today on all of our shows. And you'll notice we're going through a bit of a transition with where you can find us, but theory.ai and if anyone wonders what that is, is we are the spiritual assistant of everything that we do so it's theory.ai artificial intelligence using the computers to share this and yeah thanks to everyone who did the show maybe i could see a quick gallery view so i can just wave goodbye to everybody and <laughs> before i pass it back to jeff and i'll just oh. grab our friend here who's in the studio at all times. <laughs> oh, there's Jackie too. Mm -hmm. oh. So they got Scary TV in Mexico. Oh, love you guys. Thank you. What a joy to share this with you. I'm so grateful. So grateful. Bye. Bye. <laughs>